role is I serve as the vice president for learning experience for a company called Wex Health. And we are the part of the business that I work with is a third party administrator for companies who are have health savings accounts, flexible spending accounts, COBRA insurance, that type of thing. So that's the that's the world where we live. The role that I have, I have a team of 20 and we are doing a couple of different things. We are onboarding and upskilling our any new hires and anyone internal to the organization who needs to be upskilled or take on a different role. We also build and design learning for our external clients and customers. Those mainly take the form of videos and webinars. is anytime I see a theory, a concept, a model, I do what most adults do, what all of us probably naturally do, and I try to relate it back to something else I know, back to something that I can contextualize it in. And over this 20 year plus career in the business, I had come across multiple theories and models and ways of working. And all of them, I believed should fit together, but there were still these gaping holes. Because I think too often in learning and development, we tend to take one theory, one concept, and we think, all right, let's apply that. Yep, that's the one we're going to go with. But I kept asking this question of why can't we combine these and look at them more holistically, taking the best parts of every single theory that we see. And that, that's where I get back to modern learning. That is what the LCD model did for me. So thank you, Crystal and Lisa, because what this did was it took all of those concepts, all of those theories and said, no, 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 no. These all fit together. What you have been thinking about, Jess, what is these big gaps? I don't know how you all got in my head, but you went, no, 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 you're on the right track. You can put them all together. And in fact, you should if you want to be even more impactful. So that is where the learning cluster design um, method came and became really impactful for me, why I connected to it so quickly. It gave me this framework and this language to start talking about all of these things that I, that had been swimming, but I didn't have a way to connect them. I knew I wanted to use this model in our own L&D strategy moving forward. And I knew that the first step of that is always, how do I create some buy-in and some understanding around what it is? It all makes sense in my head, but how do I make sure that it makes sense in everyone else's? So the very first thing I did was start with my own inner circle. So I pulled our leadership team in, which is four of us, and we read the book together and was very intentionally discussed, how are we going to infuse this model into our own L&D strategy? How, how are we gonna use this? And that was in late 2020. They loved the book, they bought in, They we started brainstorming and we determined we were gonna use the learning and um, the LCD model to lead our next level revisions and enhancements. So we thought, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our team on board. We're gonna introduce this to the rest of the team. So the other, at this other 16 people at our retreat, the first quarter of the year. And um, we did that. There is a woman who's on the call right now. Actually, her name is Becky Grothy. I think she hopped on as Rebecca. And she became our champion for that, uh, that part of, of presenting it at our retreat. But what we did even before the retreat is we started prepping the team ahead of time and they didn't know it. See, I'm, I'm kind of sneaky this way. So, <laughs> so what we did was we said, hey, before the retreat, we want you all to gather all of the assets that you already train with. What are all the articles, handouts, job aids, um, reference guides, webinars, what are all the things and put them all together for each of the different topics that you train on, list their learning objectives. And that's, that's where we need you to start. So they didn't know they were already starting to gather assets, but that's what they were doing. We just didn't tell them that that's what they were doing yet. So we had them all do that before the retreat. And then when we got to the retreat, we introduced the model starting from, and I say we, it was really Becky, introduced the model starting with that surround learners with meaningful learning assets action, and then talking a little bit about upgrading existing assets, but really the surround learners is where we started. She asked the, she created, Becky created a learning cluster about learning clusters. 
<laughs> Did you follow that? A learning cluster about learning clusters. So during the retreat, we, we shared fo with folks in all these different ways. We used one of your videos, Crystal. We used some job aids. We used some interactive activities, some polls, a whole bunch of different ways for folks to interact. Becky created a couple of job aids for them. And then we sent them off into small groups to create their own cluster around something that was not work related. So they had to go out to the internet and they had to do some searching and figure out what that cluster would look like. And it was on things like how to install a dishwasher, um, how to change the oil in your car, how to bake croissants, something that probably most people hadn't done before, but you knew if they needed to, they would start immediately by Googling or YouTubing something. So they did that and came back and reported back to us. So now the next step, then we closed it all up with, okay, guess what? We're already on this path. And now what we're going to do is starting with the surround learners. And we talked about, as you did, um, Crystal, the immediate formal and social learning. We're going to make sure that all of our assets around these different topics are, we can group them into clusters. And that's how we're going to start creating and moving forward with upgrading and upskilling um, um, our onboarding program already. It's fairly robust. We've got a lot of stuff. We need to get better at organizing it and presenting it to our learners in such a way that they can engage with it very easily in a way that makes sense for them. The next steps after that, so now they each, each person on the team has been assigned a goal for the year to create at least one, if not multiple clusters. Um, and we will be introducing to them the other sections of the model and it will fall into place very easily. Personas is gonna be easy for us to hop in because of the way that we train, I think. I mean, we'll see, I could be wrong. We're already talking about changing on the job behavior in terms of are those objectives for the cluster not just for the individual event, and then how to track those results at the end. So we'll pull it all in. It's been a blast. Becky's been a great champion so far, and she, we're very excited because she is going to be participating in the workshop that Crystal's doing in, uh, or Crystal and team are doing in April. And I know she can't wait. I won't put her on the spot, but she's excited. We've got her all registered for that. The only thing that I would have done differently if I had to go back now is I would have um, I would have engaged Crystal to do a workshop just for our team instead of doing it ourselves. One of the things I love is that, as Crystal mentioned earlier, it's not linear. You can start anywhere. So we are starting because we're because we're taking this and what we're what we're doing is um, we are using it for next level revisions. We're not necessarily starting from the beginning and building anything from scratch, which is also part of what I love about it. We don't have to start over. We can start in the middle. We're starting with surround learners with meaningful access assets and upgrading existing assets. So that's where I knew we needed to start because we've got a ton of stuff out there. Part of the issue is that those things are not connecting together for our learners. They're all out there and they're all scattered. But as Crystal showed that, um, that other visual of let's show this whole, not an event, but a cluster of information, that's where we needed to start.